Yirashimase. Hello and welcome to Fataris' Kitchen. I'm your host, Chef Fataris. It's time once again for Shoot 'em Up Saturday. And on the menu for this Saturday, we have Dolphin Blue, an arcade run and gun from Sammy released in 2003. What kind of taste will it have? Let's get cooking and find out. Log 1. Jumping right into Dolphin Blue, one of the first things you might notice is the visual style the game has. So we've got a 2D sprite, and um, well, rather 2D sprites, with 3D backgrounds and objects, like that ship, the deck that we're on, running in the background. So it goes and provides a rather unique and interesting aesthetic that was unique to kind of the time that the game was developed. As far as gameplay is concerned, it's your basically your typical run and gun shoot 'em up. We go have a couple options to us. There's our main gun that we have. We do have a special attack, though it can be kind of hard to use, and that was a bad place to actually show it off. And there's a couple different styles of gameplay that we have here. Though of course we went and saw the beginning of the stage. We're walking over the deck of a ship. But then a lot of it we're also riding around on our dolphin. Which as we are riding around on our dolphin, that provides for a lot of our special attacks. And then there are also underwater segments, which we'll see here shortly. So like a lot of running guns of this style, we only have a main cannon, which isn't rapid fire. We also have a knife that we'll attack enemies with if we happen to be within melee range. And there are power-ups everywhere to pick up. Maybe not as many as there needs be, but in, at least to me it feels that they come up often enough. The power-ups we do pick up are limited though. Under your score, you can see how many shots you have of your current weapon. And the power, or rather our special attack, is determined by a meter in the bottom left there. Level 1, level 2, and max. Uh, we find ourselves in the third type of action for Dolphin Blue, underwater. There's some things I really like about the underwater battles and that's some of the detail that's provided in the enemies. Like when you go and take out one of the enemy soldiers that's in a scuba suit, the scuba suit expands and explodes. It's a really interesting visual appeal. I don't really know if that's accurate as far as how it would ha actually happen under the surface of the ocean, but... We already find ourselves at the boss of stage one. There are a total of five stages in Dolphin Blue. And while the first stage might start off easy, this is an arcade run and gun, and things get blisteringly hard by the end. If you were playing this in an arcade, be expecting to dump lots of quarters, yen, your coin of choice, as it were, into the machine. Which brings me to uh, talking a little bit about the game itself. So it was released on the Atomus Wave, which was a semi-developed arcade platform based off of the Sega Naomi arch uh, architecture. So the Atomus Wave was basically a Neo Geo, it was a cartridge-based system, kind of like the Neo Geo MSV just based off of Sega's Naomi. Log 2. Stage 2, we find ourselves back underwater, and we'll actually be underwater for the vast majority of this stage. So, just the platform itself, I think, is intriguing. 
But one thing to go and note is also the time that the game was developed, or that it came out. Running guns weren't very commonly developed anymore in 2003, and indeed, at least in North America, the arcade scene was definitely dying by that point. So up until recently, this is a game that I was completely unfamiliar with. It never received any home console ports as well. Part of that might be due to the demise of the Dreamcast, which the Naomi hardware was closest to. So it's not a really common game to be aware of. It lives in the realm of obscurity. So just an observation, if we're trying to rescue this princess in the background here, why are we attacking the ship that she's on? If this ship were to sink, wouldn't that basically spell doom for our poor captured princess? The lack of rapid fire on your main gun can be problematic. I sh probably should have used my special attack there. It does behave in a burst pattern, though, so that's not too bad. So, plus flavors for Dolphin Blue. The water setting, is in having the various types of stages, including the, most specifically the underwater sections, help Dolphin Blue stand out as a rather unique run and gun. I also really like the sprite work that they did with it, and the mix of 3D, 2D art is, while awkward, it's a visual look that I've always enjoyed. I find it comp strangely compelling. Minus flavors to give it? It does have arcade level difficulty, so it's almost too easy to accidentally get yourself killed unless you're being really really careful but you know that's just an arcade developed title for you and another minus flavor a title like this it would have been great if it had had the opportunity to reach a greater audience so if it had received a console port that would have been wonderful but never having actually received one, it lives in relative obscurity. Which is disappointing. The game itself doesn't necessarily bring anything new to the run and gun genre. But as that genre is a time tested. fun part of arcade history, it's a pity that it's largely an unknown title. I don't know why these guys are trying to sneak up on the ground behind me. This is definitely if you happen to find yourself with the ability to play an arcade machine of Dolphin Blue, or if you're interested in trying to emulate the title, I think it's a fun one to at least have a look at. Maybe up close, nope. <laughs> Not a good way to handle it. Whoa. 
we're almost done with the battleship, we find ourselves at the boss of stage two. The character designs are really interesting as well. At the stage introduction screens, we've seen the captains, lieutenants, however you want to refer to them that we're going and fighting against. Oh, I didn't realize that he had a flamethrower there. Losing quarters left and right here. At least you do keep your special weapons between lives. It would be disappointing if you were to lose such. And that'll wrap us up for this week's episode of Shoot 'em Up Saturday. As always, I want to thank you so much for coming out and joining me, and I look forward to seeing you next week.